Might have a little leash now. Uh, I'm looking for it on your on your Sea King there. I don't see it, but should be close by, right? Should be. Is that it there? Yeah, that's it. I'll do it. I'm going to do another 10 because we're going south after that. Okay, man. Bridge, nav. Yep. Let's do one more step, 10 meters, 200. Zero, zero. Thank you. Okay, where do you want to drop this thing, Trev? So that can go... Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Hang on. So delta might be high for this um, stretchy. Yeah. yeah. Be stretchy? For the stretchy. Stretchy. Stretchy so eye. I think we'll just, we'll, we're not going to put the wand in the tool basket for now because we want to leave access for all the stuff that we have to do. Roger. Yep, but if we go around to the other side to where the isobaric samplers are that we're going to collect, we can leave this wand there. If you telestrate, we'll drive. Sure, yeah, let's take you a You don't want to leave the floaty thing on the side we're not going to be then? No. Well, we're gonna we might we're gonna have to pull uh, that platform out on this side most likely. Okay. And I just don't want anything in our way when we do. Yeah. All right. I mean, we can pro uh, and then we're gonna have to put a new platform in. We don't know which side we're gonna want to put that platform. Yeah. In, so All and right. the camera's gonna have to come in as well. So let's keep the tool basket empty, and this can go in on top of everything. Yep. At the end. Yeah, that's one. It's a nightmare crab there, just in case anyone. Yeah. So we're going to be looking to pick this up so we can sit down somewhere that allows that. Okay. And put the okay. wand, you know, wherever that is. And this is the other thing we're going to pick up. So, okay. potential the landing wall. zone. The, oh, this only goes one way. Yeah. There. Yeah, that'll work. I'll put the wand out somewhere by where that crab is, maybe. Yeah, hit the crab with it. <laughs> Why is this not doing a thing? Hello. Hello. <laughs> That's the toolbox crab. It's just been hanging out by the toolbox. Tim the tool man crab. Not your best work. <laughs> <laughs> AJ's dad joke game is... Uh, okay, you yeah. want to drop that there somewhere? It's okay. improving. I think we can all argue it's improving. You know what? you got to shoot your shot. You know, you can't, They can't all be gems. Right here? Yeah. Be free. Be. Take the twist be out. Be free. You had to wrap it around your be arm free. 16 times. Yeah, I did have to, AJ. <laughs> Let's just make a note that we left that. Yeah. Arm is oh, secure. I think I'm going to do it in the in the cool. actual good dive plan. Uh, don't do it in that one because we're going to. We're going to update that. Look at these guys. Where'd their um. little basket go? Yeah, so right now I'm just driving off a of DVL because our USBL gets a bit wonky when the bow thruster is strained in the weather we are in. So it's going to be a just dead reckoning. Sorry, and we were down. sitting at vents, so it's not quite super accurate. So that's the old target there. Yeah, the new one is really just kind of dead reckoning. Maybe I can go 25 meter delta for now. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Let me know when you're good. Okay. What happened to the basket for these guys? Anyone know? I think it, it got ejected. 
Ejected on the seafloor? I believe so. So, do we know where it got ejected? No. Maybe I should read between the lines better, but is that something we should be looking for? No. Okay. Roger. We're putting these in the starboard box. Is that the story then? These are going to go on the porch with a cinch strap. Which we definitely have. Which you definitely have. But the cinch strap will happen when we get the bars too, eh? Uh, it could, yep. Yeah. Kind of a, I guess, open You're for good, debate. Trev. Whether Kay. you want to cinch all three or whether you want to cinch this and then just hold the bars on top of it all with the I'll magnum. Standing by. Go for it, mate. We, we, we can't really sit level. Uh, okay. Um, AJ, let's uh, leave these loose and then we'll decide game time once we get the other stuff. That sounds great. Thanks. Great. Nailed it. They were, they were looking a little clean. Yeah. Patience. What am I stuck on? Oh, they're just heavy. It's like they say, good. never never let good enough get in the way of worse. <laughs> Shut up, Ray. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny, though. Wow. That was just for Trevor. Yeah. <laughs> Jaws closed. And, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> next one. Here we go. That's very funny, though. <laughs> yeah. I'm still thinking about that. That's I know. It's I don't know. I don't quite know if it works out, but it was pretty good. Works out to my mostly concentrating mind, so that's good enough. Yeah. Do we want to make sure this cable is going to come clear away when we oh, try to? Is it? Let me pose that question to you. Do you want me to make sure this cable comes clear? Yeah. Let's okay. do that. What would you like me to do? Uh, maybe open grip and just pull it towards you. What if I just close grip and pull it towards you? Okay. Any grip. Any just grip. Pull it towards me. Dealer's choice okay. on the grip. Put your grip in a position and then leave it there. Oh, it w there was more of it than expected. Good thought, AJ. That, that might have had something to do with how these ended up on the, the seafloor. Hmm. You want me to retract the camera again? Uh, I think you'll be okay for now. Well, I'll let you know if I get scared. Or you let me know if you get scared. Sure. Can't argue with that. Oh, oh yeah, the Remus. Probably should recover the Remus because we can't land <coughs> like that on deck. Put it next to the other Remus, right in front of you. Yeah, good idea. Hey, that's someone was asking where the where Reamer is. went. Pile yeah. of Reamers. Oh, Why don't we get those two Reamers? Derek had no idea where the Reamer was. How are was. you doing that, Dave? That's incredible. Yeah. Just push it on the rock, man. Nice. There we go. Let's uh, double reamer starboard box. Does that sound good? Sounds excellent. Okay. I'll do that then. You're going to go for two? Yeah, but I can't reach okay. right now. So I'm going to... Go for one. Well, I'll just... Oh, yeah. I could uh, I could just go for it now. Where are you going? What is all this nonsense? Go away. That's also where my last tied gas tight safety went. Yeah, I'm going to go to preset three I'm on mobile all my stuff and then go around here. the starboard side. Ah, okay. Yeah, it was like a mass abandon everything. Moving sail. Uh, Thank you, Josh. Sample tray coming out. Okay. Okay. Ooh, yep. You can close it. Or leave it open, I guess. Doesn't matter. Is the other one going in now? The other one's going in as soon as I grab it. Are we bringing up this bead bag too? Probably not. Nope. Leave it down there. Maybe I can reach? Yeah, not likely. Nope. Okay. The bead bag looks pretty empty, eh? 
Yeah, I'd say that's just a sack. So let's bring it up. Okay, I'm out of there, Dave. Yep. Trying to get in there somewhere. Okay, clear. Yeah. And since we're here, we can bring up that gas tight safety as well. Yeah? We're the, we're the cleanup crew. Okay. Raj. I think this crab's claimed it though, so I don't know. I'll yeah. ask him first. We'll have to fight. Well, I'll just you know, ask nicely first for just immediately oh. resorting to violence, AJ. <laughs> well, we'll see what it comes to. Yeah. Uh, have some respect more for of a code. suggestion uh, than anything, but do we want to pick up the wand lollipop and like hang it off yep. of something? Do that last. Happy to go for it, Dave? Yep. Okay. Excuse me, Crab. Do you oh, mind if I just grab right. this? Diplomacy worked. Just a handshake and then a move on with our lives, you know? Is this greedy? No, I think you got it. You got it. So the bag's going to be lovely to put in the... Oh, no, it's full. It's got some stuff, so it'll be fine to put in the starboard bio box. It's not much use down there at 0.5% no. full. 0.5% I. I was just thinking if it was a totally empty, it would be a forward box kind of situation. It has that plastic handle. Should keep it down. Yeah. Okay, uh, you should probably be good there, actually. Oh, can I say it? Yep, yeah, get off of me. <laughs> really? Do that twice. You want to try closing the box? There? I, or you're holding it, and I'll, I'll close yeah. the box. See if that knocks over the. Yeah, probably good. Oh, not quite. <coughs> no, I don't think so. Depends on how close you want that box. I don't want to bung the seals. It's sharp and pointy, so I'll just. It's okay. I got it. Okay. What's next? Are we going down to pick up the bars? Yeah, I'm gonna put this lollipop on the porch, oh, okay. and then we're then we're going. I think. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Uh, sample tray come in before we do too much thrustering. What do you think, Dave, before I pick this lollipop up, do you want to get a ship move in or do you want to wait? Where's this, where is it, the thing we need to pick up? It's just right in front of us. It's just attached oh, to sorry. the end of the cable. Or do you mean the next thing that we have to move to? No, the lollipop you're talking about, where is it? It's just out of view, or just within view, uh, on the front there. Let me. The dangly the bit on the end of the. Yeah. Silver things. Yeah. This is right down Next there. up, we're gonna go to Sanya Bars, which is okay. south of the South IP. Roger, grabbing the lollipop, and then we'll go. But yeah, we can. Pro as far as I'm concerned, we can get a ship move in right now. Roger. Yeah. That's just the old bars, right? The one that we moved temporarily to the IP. AJ. Sorry, Remy. That's the old, uh, b the old bars that we put next to the IP. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Call with it Remy. The, with the super long so green cable. So I'm gonna go eight zero meters at one nine five. Can you uh, show me porch please? bridge now? What do you want? Show me the porch a little bit. Yep. Step eight zero meters, bearing one nine five. See what I can hook this on. Thank you. How about on here? On the T. Yeah. Look at him. Look at him go. Ready? It's got a lot of uh, memory, that thing. I remember when I had it on the T. Yeah, I remember that too. So, AJ, I'm going to ignore your advice of picking that <laughs> lollipop up. <laughs> unless you want me to try again and oh, expect different fair. results. Okay. It's, uh, it was simply advice. Yeah, I appreciate the it was a suggestion. suggestion. Okay. Gentle. Come back up. Where am I going, Rem? Uh, we are going so 195, so we're going south. We're going to follow some cables down to the IP. So are we secure? Yeah, roughly south. Can you do me a favor? 
take yeah. this bias off, get rid of it, or crank it up, whichever. Yeah, that's what I've been trying to do. Uh, uh, is it not set to the oh, right thing? Oh, it's spare five. That's why this button yeah. was up. That's why that spare valve kept turning on. Neat. <laughs> I'll turn the spare valves off again. Cheers. <laughs> it's like, why does the spare valve keep getting turned on? Yeah, it's up now. There you go. Yeah, those buttons change what the encoders do. Okay. Good. It looks Good. like a very simple box, but as it turns handy, out, handy to know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, buttons there. change what the other buttons do. It's uh, full of features you don't want. Yeah. All right. Okay, so we're going south again, basically, right? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. South. Along this cable, or? No, the cable's no. going to take us a little. No, go south and you'll hit another cable and we'll take that. Yeah. Okay. On the way. Thanks for taking that wrap out. Well, actually, it might have been the, that might have been the right cable. <coughs> what cable was that? You sure? Or not, just go or south. Or not. Go no, south. We'll get it. Doesn't sound it. Okay. I'll keep going south yeah. for now. <coughs> yeah. Roger. I have a feeling we'll see that cable again. I have a feeling that's not the last we've seen of that cable. <laughs> As it rides off into the sunset? Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bring Atalanta heading to southish. Fine. <clears throat> Done. Fine. Ooh. Is the uh, ship moving there, ready? It is indeed. I'm gonna the look at the porch on with bubble here. I just want to figure out the cinch strap. Okay, just keep. Yep, zoom forever. It could be. Is it under the under the toolbox there? Thing zooms all the way to Hades every time. Yeah. There's a cable. Yep, that's a good one to follow. Oh, this doesn't send two commands at once, that's why. Keep, yep, zoom in on that particular bolt. Yeah, good. Mm -hmm. It confirmed it's there. Let's zoom all the way wide now. Okay, yeah. now we'll zoom all the oh way yeah, there in it again. Is. It's on that side. Just stop. No, just stop. Okay. <laughs> this is comically difficult. Okay, we got some cinchage. It's because the size Should be of pretty close to the IP now. There, is it not? Say it one more time. This is the size of your step. You change that slider, it should that should change your zoom. Uh, that's just a slider of controlling the zoom. I Might think. be at, at the end of the leash for a moment as yeah. we move. Yeah, that's just the that's just the control for zoom. Okay, well I see the start of the cinch strap. I don't see any more of it. Hopefully, it's if we porch out that we can find more of it. the like uh, cavern yeah it's good then the cable's not down there <laughs> yet yeah Feels we've, like we've thrown much cables deep. down much deeper yeah, cracks you know, some before. of the places we've got cables is wild <laughs> yeah we haven't i haven't been through roger's pass yet in yeah. all this time miss right. it you know it's funny that that's always the way we went until we realized you could just go around, just go around, just go around, just around the other way, way and just make longer, so let a somewhat longer cable and just go the easier way. Yeah. yeah. Instead of threading a needle every time. 
But the threading of the needle is quite fun. It is fun. Especially, I think there was one year we had a 30 meter tether on and we just, our guest was just like in a chimney the whole time. Get gassed out. <laughs> just get gassed out. I can't breathe. I think it was the year we were doing inshore stuff, so we couldn't really have a 50 meter tether where we'd be on deck. Right. Mm -mm. On the beach. Oh, yeah. I remember the inshore stuff in uh, Santa Chinlet. Yeah. And. Uh, wow, that one's funny, the one that's right there. There's one on the cliff, like right yeah. on the cliff dive where the ship was, what, 80 meters from shore or we something? We were real, real backed up to it, yeah. Yeah, it was wild. But it's at least like it was Santa Chinlet, so it was just kind of, we can't hold there then. Yeah, that's the uh, safest weather. But hey, you walk out the door of the control van, it's like, oh, there's land yeah. right there. How deep? Plenty. I, I don't know. Deep, but. deep? More um, shallow? Uh, I think it's for that specific one, I don't remember. Oh, San oh, Inchilet IP? I feel like it's pretty deep. It I thought like it was over 100. Yeah. It, yeah. I was doing an inspection ROV up on the coast of BC, and there's, we were in this fjord area, and for one of the spots we need to do these subsea transects, you could have the, we were in a 34 foot aluminum boat, you could have the bow pressed up against the cliff and dive the ROV. It was unreal. Wow. It was so bizarre. That's crazy. <coughs> Easy to hold station. Take <laughs> some photos of it somewhere. Still on the way, uh, as the ship backs down in this kind of weather, it kind of messes with the speed a little bit because it gets, right now, it overshoots that target and tries to go back. And, and just for the record, the Saanich IP is at 100 meters. Oh, nice memory. And, no, I'm Googling it. Oh. And <laughs> memory is as good as that cable. Yeah. <laughs> but the deepest place within the Saanich Inlet is about uh, 234 meters. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. There's some really cool inlets on the, the coast of mainland BC that have extremely deep depths in these bottom of these fjords. Like, like Glacier? Yeah. Was it uh, Jarvis Inlet, I think, has a thousand meter depth inside the inlet? Wow. I think that's right, something like that, or 700 meters, or it's that's some extreme number. So the What's that? Yeah, you're, get, you're tugging it, is yeah. it? Are there not some of the Norwegian fjords that are like two, two and a half thousand meters? Probably, deep? yeah. Maybe something more. like that, yeah. Big fjords off the east coast as well, off Newfoundland. What is that green cable to our left? Can we get a little, some eyes on that? Uh, yeah. Slowly. Uh, I think we followed that up, and it that's the one that kind of dripped us, over into the... It's coming back? Dripped. It, uh, uh, yeah. When we were coming from south to north, we dripped followed that up, wall, fell yeah. over the wall, and came back up. I think that is the one that we said we wouldn't see the last of. Yeah. So we can, f we can follow that. Should be getting close to all our stuff here. Another 20 meters or so. I see an IP in the Herc sonar. Yeah, something. Th I think that's that rock to our right, the one that where it splits the cables. Thank you. That's right now, like that.
So that's the new bars all set up with the vintage, right? Yep. So we'll, it'll be to the right of us. Yeah. One yeah. more time. So we can we can follow that uh, orange cable. It'll take yeah, still right still at the edge of the leash. The yeah. Okay. You guys remember this game we played? Okay. That bar is so here, much easier. Yeah. Roger. Yeah. There should be an IP over there. Time. Roger, starboard. Weather was great, AJ, you know? Yeah. The weather was great. The bars is like flat. Yeah, you just put the bars in. Just, just put plug the it bars in. on the ground. Yeah. Why do we do that for all of them? Yeah. You know, if you if you go hog wild enough with the reamer. <laughs> take down a chimney till it's, till it's like on a prairie. the seafloor. Yeah. yeah. All right, you see that green cable right at the top of the screen? Yes, sir. That's what we're going after. <coughs> yeah. And there is a lot of it. All dangless underneath the vehicle. Oh, yeah. Have fun pointing that one up on deck. It's just mm -hmm. the one we were clearing out the other day. Yes, it is. Look at how neatly it's laid back and forth. Wow. Thanks. I think that was the other shift, actually. No. No thanks. <laughs> no thanks. It was us. Is that over under? Yeah, figure eight. It's, figure eight. Yeah, it's flat coiled. Yeah. <clears throat> There's just no way this uh, comes up in a knot. No, it'll come up over and then under. Tie wrapped. All right. So we're covering that entire green cable, is that correct? Yeah, so there's a bars so hardwired on the end of it. Got and it. We're going to put the bars on the porch, use it to sort of help secure the isobaric samplers that are also on the porch, and then we're ready to recover. Bars at the other end there, isn't it? Just I uh, know the connector was on the other end. I think the bars is ahead still. Yeah, yeah just yeah. up yeah. there. Yeah. Hey, uh, can you come slack a little bit? I'm just getting, I got two wraps in the tether now, just because I'm getting pulled tight and keep spinning around. Yeah. Yeah, it's still coming. Sorry. I can uh, go a little further, but it's still got a ways to go. No, you're good. Okay. Let me Shift's back good. up. Yeah, I, I just need less tension. If I get pulled past half, then it'll take the shortest route and it'll spin around. Yeah, I, I don't quite. I'm doing them now. TVL reset real quick. There we go. I'll come back around. I don't. I see how we came all the way around like that. I came around twice. Oh, you did? Because I'm every time yeah. I get pulled, if I get pulled 90, then it's a 50-50 chance if I come the same way. Yeah. So you yeah. want me to just hold where I'm at? Where you're at's good. Yep. 50 and 50 is 100, not 90, Trevor. God. 90 degrees. <laughs> I know. <laughs> all right. It's a 45-45 chance you'll come 90 to... <laughs> The 180. So the 180. Due north. <laughs> I'm just messing with Trevor. Consider me messed with. Don't mess with Trevor. I think he's still got a bit to go, but I'll, I'll do another 10 just so we're kind of above each other. Sure. Bridge nav. Ten meters, one nine five. Thank you. Okay, almost there. Yep. Turns are out. All right, on the way. Oh, we got the old runaway tilt action. Let me stop that and tilt down. We are still pretty strung out, so you don't have a lot to go, but. Do what you can. I think it'll it'll still come even before the move I put in. It should get you there, but okay. Things are slow going. Yes, dear. This, the bar has walked away a bit. Yeah, we're <laughs> it's making a break for it. Yeah, we set it back over there. Just. <laughs>
So for folks listening in Science Party Land, um, we are in the main Endeavour field in the Northeast Pacific Ocean off the coast of Canada. And we are with Ocean Networks Canada. Um, yeah, working on some sampling, instrument so infrastructure. Just a little bit tight. Yes. Doing some instrument swap outs and all that fun stuff. I could just look away. That'd help everything. You mean just to butt, like, uh, butt cam to butt cam? Right. Yeah, I gotta come to port though. I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, I can't get there. Still too tugged. Yeah. But tugged just at the wrong time, too. Yeah. But it's all right. We got it. I don't. It'll be, yeah, uh, close. Oh, it's trying to make it. You're saying you got to go to port to enable to, so you to get take your to take your app out. And then we'll get ready for recovery and everything. There you go. Come on, you can get there, buddy. It's a 45 percent chance. There it is. <laughs> I should take some of the load off too. Okay. You want to grab this? Yeah, I do. Okay. So we're gonna cinch over all of it. Is that the yeah, Trevor, what do you think is best for coming uh, up? We can, you see on bubble here, let's look at the porch. How fragile are these uh, IGTs? Can I drop a bars on top of it? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, their housings, it's like they're, as long as the connectors don't get jammed. Okay, well then maybe the first step is get that uh, cinch strap out and see what we're working with. Yeah, is it going to interfere with you trying to do the bars? I don't know. Yeah. There's no way to know. And if it does, then I'll just send strap them. Uh, the IGTs. Just the IGTs. Yeah. And then hold it with the hold bars with mango. Yeah. Yeah. Raj. Uh, let me get this one on it too. Which one do I want? I can't tell. Let's see. I think that the yellow one is the releaser and the black one is the puller. But I can't quite tell. Can you porch out, please? Yes. That'll make it easier. Let's have a zoom in there, please, video. Sure. And that's good there. Holding. Is that what I want? Hmm. I can brighten it up. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, I can't tell. Do you have a picture from uh, pre-launch? No. Yes, this is what I want, because the other one is the tightener. You can see it now. Patience. Patience. Oh. You got the pin out. Okay, come wide, please. Wide eye. See where this goes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there it is. Yeah, good. Oh, yeah. This will be great. Get that hose out of the way, too. Okay, this is fine. I think I could bars it all. Nope, cinch the bars is what I'm trying to say. Sure. Yeah, just hold that up there, then grab the bars and put it <laughs> under it. As long as I'm fast, it <laughs> <We're talking laughs> falls down. The yeah. inlets in, <laughs> oh. in Canada, and I didn't, I didn't uh, pick it up in time, so I didn't even tell the guys. Right in the thing. There it is. I think there's a holiday weekend in the States, too. 
Hey, quit current and around. Carving your name into that paint job. Yeah, right. Good enough. Those are isobaric gas tights. I think they're similar. Yeah. They're similar to the gas tights that we took earlier today, or this one. That's here so start with, the the, again. with the green okay. plastic doohickey. Um, but you can communicate them electronically, so you don't have to push a plunger. You can actually just send a signal. That's why they have these black cables coming from them. Are the green plunger ones not isobaric? Um, I think they're all isobaric. If I isobaric means better. like the same pressure, that's what it means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then yes, they are. These ones, for for whatever reason, stop. Uh, we call these ones those ones the isobaric gas tight. You can use the foot to bring it back on. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> M y Megan is using her powers to rename them mechanical and electrical. Okay. Gas can you tights. zoom? Sorry. Um, nope. Can you rack out? Camera rack out, please. Can I just ask what the scientific explanation of a doohickey is? Scroll down. <laughs> yeah. or, uh, what is it called? Tilt down, please. The, the doohickey is to prevent rogue ROV pilots from triggering the gas tights too soon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, which has been an issue. <laughs> it's well, they just, they just <laughs> happened in the past. They happen to run into every, everything you don't want the plunger to touch. It somehow they met the pilots, run into everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's also true. Now is that under or through? It's all over everything. Okay. Let's get you over here to start with. Nice. It's like, uh, what's that Olympic sport with the streamer? Underwater basket weaving? Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> Is that what you meant, AJ? <laughs> yes, do they, uh, I haven't been watching the Olympics in a few years, so it's got I haven't wild. seen that one. <laughs> oh, a little artistic fin it flourish at the end there. Oh, I'm not finished oh, yet. Oh, oh, it's going to bite you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should put the poly pro right around the T-bar. Okay. The legs are just falling into the grating. It's not falling off. Right? Right? Uh, right? Maybe. Right? I'm not sure. I don't know. Bubble. How could that bite me? Yeah. We might want to just scooch it. Nope. It's no scooching if the legs are through the thing. Uh, they but must I got the lollipop on top the of The angle is, is not significant enough for the legs to be off. Come on, thing. Get out of the... What are you trying to do? You put it through the T-handle. Through the T-handle? What you talk? No, the... Uh, this uh, the other side. starboard ice, what is it called? IGT. Oh, the isobaric sampler. Yeah. Don't make me point at it. Hey, you got your stick back. Congratulations, <laughs> oh, yeah, stick buddy. Back. Good work. Thanks. What'd you do to return it back? Um, Ed told me where it was. Okay, good. He found it somewhere. <laughs> Somebody took it from you? It's probably right for them to <laughs> do that. <laughs> point at too much stuff. <laughs> Quit pointing, and keep navigating. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, not my best work. I can grab these gray blocks, correct? On yes, the IGTs? if you're very careful. Uh, I can carefully not, grab them. And, and not watch the black wire that goes through that gray block. Can I have a zoom, please? If you see there's a wire like there, Kay. stay away from that. You can go on the end. Oh, right here yeah. is okay? Yes. Okay. I see the wire you're talking about. Thank you. Okay, come wide, please. Oh, how could this bite me? <laughs> oh, look at that mess. Oh, you're under the bar's leg. There you go. At least if you tie them all together. I'm hoping to create enough of a tangle yeah. that there's no way it could fall off. But maybe you mouse it, you know? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Then they all... <sighs> this is where the basket weaving comes in. Right. Mm-hmm. Do 
under that snorkel. And then, am I under it or am I wrapped around it twice? Wrapped you're around not, it twice. Yeah, you're not under it. Oh, uh, close. There, there you, you go. go. Almost. Maybe? No, just kidding. Oh, Your jaws got caught on it. It's yeah. fine. Bummer. <laughs> it's stuck on the little wire. Wire. There, there we go. Okay, now that's through that's everything, so that's fine. Happy? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure. happy yet? <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> Are you happy? Well, I mean, you're going to have to grab the wand as well, don't forget. Okay, do you need it on the cinch strap? No. Okay, that's fine. You see, it's things like this. This is why we put those doohickeys in. You see how close that was? No, I didn't actually, which is why you put those doohickeys in. <laughs> I did not see how close that was. <laughs> Let's go out and about in here. <clears throat> That's coming. Or as some Canadians say, oot and a boot. I think it's kind of because it's wrapped around the T-handle, it's causing the Who did that? The tension to stop at the T-handle. Uh, what idiot did that? I don't know. Get him in here. Get him in here right now. I understand why this operation was budgeted as much time as it was. <laughs> yeah. Not by me, for the record. No, I no, no, I no, no offense taken. Lot, that was a whole lot quicker. Yeah. Okay, now I'm offended. <laughs> you can't say anything right at this moment. Well, it's proper around that T-handle, isn't it? Since you yeah. Um, so, Adelance has pretty close to above Hercules. Well, we should probably come up on the old Delta, Delta is 30. Yeah. Thank you. When right. we recover, we're going to want to recover to the south to Roger. make sure that this green cable gets pulled away from the IP. I think that that should work. <coughs> Yeah, I don't know. Do I undo this? Do I fix my mistake? I double still. down. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think you need to. Okay. Because we want to pull. We want more tension on that strap. Yeah, Roger. <coughs> yeah. Duh, it was so fancy once, you had to do it again. Yeah. This is like the carnival game where you can't get the loop to touch the metal thing. Right. Operation? Yeah, yeah. Operation the Carnival game. Uh, well, I'm gonna go on this side of yes. the T handle. The on on this that side, yeah. That yeah, like so. Sense. Perfect. Okay. Now let's grab this thing that I can't see. Yep. Uh, tilt up, maybe. Can't see. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Nice. Oh, nope, not nice enough. <laughs> oh, grab it in more. Oh, oh, so not, with, not with uh, slow grab. Oh, right. Is slow grab uh, a grip force thing? Or a yeah. No. no. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, grip force, yeah. So we're in slow mo, instant replay mode. Instant replay mode? Yeah. Yeah. What if you closed all the way, though? Okay, what if you closed all the way? Yeah, this time for sure. Yeah. I'm going to slide right to the end, as definitely I planned. Can you tip me up, please? Yep. Then spin it. Mm. Oh. oh, no. Everything's going to plan. So every the, it's just that one, yeah. it's that the one starboard. Yeah. Okay, camera down, please. Wasn't you're in the wrapped snorkel, around but enough. it's not yeah. really yeah, around anything else. What can we do to secure that now? Kind Where is it tied? Where is the strap? Tight. It's through it. It's so you only have the snorkel, essentially. Yeah, understood. Yeah. 
Whoops. Oop. Well, that worked. Oh, yeah, yeah. That somehow worked. Yeah, I definitely meant wow. to do that on purpose. Yep. I meant to do it slower, but yep, that's approved. Uh, then we'll put the magnum on it and call it a day. Like get way over, right? Get um, the wand. Oh, yeah, get the yep. wand. I can't see it, but I'll we'll grab it anyway. Down there. Just grab randomly. I can't grab the main thing, right? I got to go for the T handle. Yes, please. So this being a used bars, um, are you able to reuse that temperature, the probe? Yep. Oh. Yep, we can reuse all of it. It's not... Uh, as long as it still works, it's all... Yeah. Why is it coming up? That's a really good question. Roger. Maybe it doesn't still work? Why are we bringing the Sanya bars back? Is it broken? Servicing? This hmm. bar is right here that's yeah. on the porch? Yeah, it's... It, uh, it was working, but I I want to say it was somewhat compromised. Not everything was working properly. Oh, that makes sense. Because did we get the temperature from it, like when we, we were did, taking it yeah. out kind of thing? We sure did. Yeah. So. so it wasn't completely fried like the yeah. grotto one, but. Uh, yeah. How about like that? What if we porch in now, just for fun? That'll be fun. You could bubble can and see if the porch is going to... Yeah, stand by. Stand by. Yeah, all stopped. See if it's going to crunch or just crunch, smush. Yeah, crunch or smush. <coughs> Looks like it's the starboard one is the, is the it's just catching closest. Yeah. yeah, I think that'll be okay. Keep going. One more? Maybe one more bump? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Great. Um, how's, the, how's the strap? Should I do one more just because we're... Here should I be well though? enough alone? Uh, do another one. I think it's worth the minute it takes. Okay. Minute, he says. <laughs> oh, well, you... Oh, it's so frustrating not being able to do midwater grabs anymore. It's my whole thing. But yeah, so wait, why not anymore? Uh, s a setting... Okay, that's tight. I'll make up for it with some flair. <laughs> yeah, I mean, know what you're doing. All right. There it's isn't anyone in the van who didn't know what was going to happen <laughs> yeah, when I pick that thing up. <laughs> <laughs> Is the ship uh, in a good position for us to recover, making sure that we pull away to the south? Yes. Bonk. Yep. Yeah, you should have Port arm is secure. I'll run the Magnum. Let's get him out. Like 40 meters of leash to, to go south while we come up. <coughs> if there isn't anyone in the van. <laughs> <laughs> All right, are we good to recover? I'm gonna put the Magnum on this. this we got finger guns from Megan. <laughs> I think that means let's go. You don't oh. want me to put the Magnum on? Oh yeah, no Magnum on, please. Okay, we're joking. But wait, we have 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, that's how long this will take. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, actually, to slowly pull up, so we can. We can pull up with as best a view of the cable, the green cable in uh, porch cam as we can, as Herc backs away south. Yep. And then, how how many meters of cable is it? Seventy. Seventy. Seven zero. Okay. All of them. I can. I can bump Atalanta a little further south if you want, pilots. That way, you have a little more to go south with it there is um i mean there, there is stuff to the south yeah there is a so kind of just a very tall up. vent over there yeah I think we just want to come up i yeah. think we just want to be you know maybe 15 20 meters to south and then come straight up yeah. okay roger we'll start coming up pretty quick from here and just back away about 15 20 meters facing it coming up but yeah yeah and we'll watch butt cams and yeah. sonars because there's that tall that's another one I almost ran into. So. Tower 11? Yeah, that's Tower 11. Okay, huh. happy there? Yeah, no dramas, mate. Yeah, it's mm. fine. I think everyone's happy there. Sure, let's go. Okay, coming up. Our arms and are both secure. Scientist Steve yep. confirmed that the temperature on the bars worked, but everything else was kaput. Uh. So it is in need of some maintenance. It looks like it's in need of yeah, some maintenance. Yeah, that's what he said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looks like it could use a little scrub. Yeah. So we do have a dangly lollipop 
hanging out yeah. the front. We've got one dangly lollipop and a very dangly foul mat. Okay, you can start picking up, mate. Picking up. All right, let I'll me come up quick, all this come stuff up here. as well. We'll stream this out quite nice. Yeah, great. I'll keep a 32 meter delta. Yeah, cool. I'll 34. do nothing. Can you uh, hold position ready? Yeah, I'll do absolutely nothing to help you guys. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Now I can hear you. Yeah. Hello. Hey. I have that mask at distance. Mm, right. No, no more mask. I have one at the ready in my holster, though. Mask? Yeah. In your holster? <laughs> Still on your ears, just around the back of your head. Yeah. Oh, you're really coming up. You're just going for it, eh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coming up. You're already. going up really fast. Keep that nice and clear, straight up and down as much as we can. Okay. No dragging, no snagging. Uh, Roger. I'll try and catch up. Where am I now? I'm 35 up, so... Yeah. And I'm, I'm way We're falling behind. Yeah, you're okay. <laughs> I don't see any tugging on it. Nope. Let's Can you stop, that. please? Yeah, I have. I've come off a bit. Okay. I'm just drifting up. Okay. The rock bottom. We're okay. We've got a 32 Delta. Okay, yeah. I just see in tether and cameras. I don't like seeing tether in, so. I'm still coming up fast. Okay, are we want to uh, just Where recover now? Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm gonna put. I don't want to really go ahead though. No, no, understood. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. We'll wait till we get at least 70 <laughs> off the deck. Yeah, yeah, about 80 meters up. Yeah. Yep. Great. So I can keep a little bit of down in to stop us coming. I up think so we're gonna quick. do both of you. No, you're you're coming out. Of, I I was there just we go. fell behind is all. Is that tugging or is that just? Uh, I don't think it's tugging. I think it's me tugging because I'm at 46 meters above. Oh, okay. Coming up. Yep. Yeah, it's just hurt pitching. Yeah. Yep. Hey. Good. Yeah. Video's going off comms for a minute. Bye right. now. All right, mate. <clears throat> 60 meters up. All right. Gosh. You want to um, bias a bit to your port? I will do once I get to that 70, 75 Yeah, I'm just worried cause that we're drifting towards the IP, which is north. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I, I think there's a termination can on the end. I don't want to catch up in that. Of this connector, I think it's just a, or of this cable, I think it's yeah. just a connector. A connector, that's what I mean. The yeah. connector and the IP, I don't want to interact, yeah. and it's kind of, they laid it kind of close to it. Mm -hmm. They? You, I don't know who did yeah. it. They. They. <laughs> but it all looks good so far. I haven't seen so much as a tug at all. Nope. Yeah. That's good. No, we're good. We're clear. Raj. Okay. 75 up. So that should be clear at the top of the IP. Um, keep coming up because there's some towers that are tall. Um, if we reposition the termination can, or the, uh, the plug might bump into them. So we'll just keep coming up as is for a bit.
pilots, is this a good time for a bit of chat? Uh, not quite yet. Okay. Maybe we'll start repositioning around 100 meters because I think there's some tall, like 20 meter uh, vents. Yeah, that's cool. 20 meter vents plus 70 meter tether gives us 100 meters up bottom. Got it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. 45 and 45 makes 100 percent. Yep. 90. 90, 45. Okay. 90, 45. Um, okay. Cool. Pretty much there now. Yeah, I think we're good, guys. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, we can drive out however you guys want. And, uh, yeah, my headings match the ship. If you, I think, if you come to port, you're gonna I'm have no wraps. Gonna swing, yeah. Come around until I'm my ass ends space and yours. Yeah, okay. that should do it. It'll be funny from the vents perspective down there with this thing dangling. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> weird, weird look at it, Oop, but sure. That's you know. just swung you around quite hard there. Yeah. yeah. It's because we got a 40 meter separation still. Yeah. Yeah, as you stretch out, I'll, I'll slow down. I'm going to switch over to USBL because we're losing Doppler stuff. USBL. And get this to USBL. USBLs everywhere. Get some bow thruster or something. Uh, I don't know. We were doing so good there. Yeah, good on the bottom. Yeah. Now it's back. Came back. Very next day. I'm gonna start and push ahead a bit. Okay. Roger. Little bit of lateral port. A little bit of a head. Oh, why did that happen? It's hmm. weird. Fun, nice feature. It just auto zoom out, see everything yeah, it's all at once. One click out, and it goes back to yeah. seeing the entire Earth. This will likely be our recovery heading. Okay. Unless some major change in weather patterns in the next hour and a half. Breaks all the weather models. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. You're coming up a little faster. Where's the doohickey? That one, yeah. Any anybody ever tell you you got great ankles? You know, uh, no. What well, you do? I guess we're available for chat now. Yeah. Lauren. Yeah, please, Lauren, if you could <laughs> <laughs> get me out of this one. I, yeah, you know what? I really like you, Rennie, so I'm Thanks. I'm happy to take over. I'm happy to hear about your ankles. How do you feel about my ankles? <laughs> <laughs> Rennie, Let's see them. I'm looking at them. Um, I can't watching. see them. It's hard to like concentrate. Regular ankles. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Well... <laughs> On that happy note, folks were asking uh, about what, what we were doing down there. Um, so we were at the main Endeavour node on field. the Ocean Network field, thank you, field. Um, in the Ocean Networks Canada um, infrastructure. Um, and this was a, this is in a marine protected area. We're just heading up on deck um, with Herc and, and Atalanta because we are expecting some weather. 
Um, we, I, I don't know, maybe pilots, you want to chat a little about the complexities of the tasks that you were working on. It was lots of different instruments, collecting samples, you know, putting things back on the deck. You summed um, it up pretty good, actually. Yeah. We're just right. doing what the people in the back row tell us to do. <laughs> Who have disappeared? Oh, no, AJ's still there. No, no. Yeah, we're, we're s still got folks here. Yeah. Yeah, just doing what we're told. Right. So uh, you may have heard us chat a little bit about the BARS, which is a benthic and resistivity sensor. And this instrument gives us a whole bunch of readouts, has a number of sensors on it, and it gives us a number of readouts and information about the hydrothermal vents. We will leave the bars in, in the venting structure. We were getting um, surrounding water two degrees Celsius. Once the instrument is in, up to 300 degrees Celsius. Yeah, over 300. Yeah, over. over. And uh, all that data is live at oceannetworks.ca. Head to the Oceans 3.0 data portal. And you can see that the instrumentation readouts as well. Um, we were doing some palm worm sampling. Um, these are, we are in a marine protected area, so these are, um, a, a permit has to be put in place for this collection. And a neat thing about this is that this collection is going to be used for, um, it's either doctoral or postdoc research uh, and mapping the genome of this particular species, which is exciting. Um, and yeah, someone's asking about fish. Have we seen any fish? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, we've seen a few. Uh, so we've seen at least a couple of snail fish down there at the very bo bottom of the benthos. They're the super slow moving, moving ones with the, uh, I don't know, very um, characteristic tails to them. So. Um, there are some other small fish, but I'm not too good at IDing those, but yeah, we saw some down there. And I think, was it the, we saw some lantern fish, uh, mictophid, mictophids, mictophids, yeah. yesterday. Yeah, um, usually, usually at like nighttime, but maybe we'll see some in the, in the mid-range of the water column coming right, up. Right, we call that the mesopelagic area, I believe. Yeah, that's right. And, yeah. Um, also worth note is um, gas tights. This was another sampling that we were doing. Um, I believe to take a look at the gases in the areas coming out of the venting structures. Yeah, I think those get processed um, in the lab to determine what uh, the chemical components of, of the gases and the, what minerals are exiting the earth in these very tectonically active areas. And the information gets paired with the information coming out of the benthic and resistivity sensor because when you know the composition of the gas and then you see the resistivity change, you can can help you to try to understand um, what, how, what is changing chemically over time uh, as these vents uh, age or change. So, Very cool. I think those two typically come in a pair. You'll see us go and take a gas tight um, in a region where we're going to place a bar sensor so that, you know, it ties the bars to a, a chemical composition that gets collected. And sometimes we'll also take a gas tight at the end as well if the bars is still reporting good data when we go back then we'll take another gas tight and that way you sort of have sort of a start and end time um, snapshot of the chemicals and then you can sort of see how those changed over time using the the bars instrument so do they in a way calibrate the bars readings like yeah sort of i don't yeah you, you can kind of look at it like that or that the bars um helps understand it adds like a time domain component to the gas tight. Right. So over, so we obviously go back and visit these over time. Do you see a lot of change then? Or, or I guess that's kind of like a bigger scientific question. Yeah, that's a good question from maybe Steve or Marv Lilly. Yeah. Um, 
as to you know how these what the results of these are but uh, I think that's something that Ocean Networks Canada does a lot of because we're constantly visiting the same places over and over again so we get into these types of sampling uh, methodologies that sort of require you to, to go back like we're not always looking for new places we go back to where our cables are mm -hmm. yeah and of, of note is uh, there are a number of publications that have resulted um, in this work Renny um, mm -hmm. so we've got um, scientists can access the data for free and um, it's been used in the journal of uh, geochemistry geophysics and geosystems aquatic conservation marine and freshwater ecology systems or ecosystems sorry and oceanography so uh, there are journal publications using using this data so lots of lots of researchers collaborating and that's that's why we do this nice Pilots, question for you. <clears throat> when when we were inserting the bars, um, mm -hmm. this is a comment from someone hours ago, so I don't don't know if they're still listening. But tell um, us how to do it better. <laughs> I was curious as well. They we kind of saw um, Herc's arm kind of shaking a little bit as you were inserting the bars. Was that was that an aberration of the the visuals because of the the venting structure, or was it nerves? Yeah, uh, the the nerves of the pilot controlling the arm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the <Nervous>. pilot was. <laughs> yeah, that's why the thoughts and prayers had to go out to Josh. Poor guy, never yeah. came back. Never. Yeah. No, it's the it's there's something in the. Yeah, the yeah. Um, in the, water. the manipulator, um, one of the joints uh, is basically a little bit shaky on its own, um, just just by from being used uh, for so long. It's not brand new, um, and they, they wear over time, and, and uh, they will start to show a bit of shakiness. It's something to do with the electronics inside the manipulators themselves. It's not unknown to happen to, uh, to them uh, on any vehicle. Uh, I've seen it on other vehicles before, but it's not a function of the, the heat or the, the video or anything. It, it is, the arm is actually shaking a, a little bit all the time. But if, you know, you should notice it. Uh, most of the time during any minute bobs. I guess some manipulator uh, <coughs> operators are better at controlling it than others. <laughs> hmm. The real trick Depends is when you expect the shakes and just command, command yeah. the input that's opposite that, you yeah. cancel yeah. them out. Yeah. yeah, see, I haven't got that use of it, but you're Could so have used your to hand this. back and forth exactly yeah, the exactly same frequency. Yeah, exactly the same frequency. Yeah. It's a like noise got canceling. It yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Trevor has noise canceling arms. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Can I write that one down? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes that's of note. Trevor <laughs> has noise canceling arms. arms. <laughs> <laughs> bit of laughter in the van. <laughs> so yeah, fun here. Yeah. Good, good day at work. Yeah. Talking about people's limbs today. Like that fun here. <laughs> and their ability to affect other senses. Yeah. Or just the beauty of them. Yeah. The yeah. unnatural beauty. To be honest. <laughs> I'm going to put these <laughs> cup and down. <laughs> put those cup away, Cup down. <laughs> We're not Pull going back to Rennie's ankles, Are please. Are you shorts up there? What's going on? It's just no, a little he's, cuff. He's yeah. just cuffed them a bit, but oh, oh wow. my. <laughs> That's what it was. If it was shorts, you wouldn't even notice. No, just yeah. a little bit. I'm yeah. sweating. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's just the grow Lauren? <laughs> yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> please. <laughs> SOS. Uh, and, and a viewer has answered that call. Um, how Great. high can the structures get around the vents? Um, so how, wh what do we think? Oh, Rennie. Rennie, this is a Rennie sure. question. This is a Rennie question for sure. Well, there's limitations on uh, wh how the vents are, like the plumbing of the vents, kind of where the fluid goes. Eventually, some will get closed off at some point, and they start venting out they're going for the path of least resistance right so they can 
kind of change the way that they're flowing in there. Um, but also then just gravity, obviously it's it's not the same. We see these very tall, skinny spires. It's not the same as on land. So you're underwater, you're able to get a bit higher. Um, and currents that will knock them over or ROVs, um, things like that. But how tall can they get? We've seen them, I don't know, what's the highest vents we've seen? 30, 25 meters or something like that. They get pretty tall, way taller than they could be on land. Right. But we're, we're never going to have island formation from this. No, 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 no. And uh, the, the, they just, they're kind of self-limiting. The, they'll fall over at a certain height. And we've seen remnants of them. And then extinct vents where there's no longer, you know, the plumbing has cha changed deeper down. So an entire vent structure will be extinct. And then it'll be, uh, it'll have been, that venting will occur somewhere else. Right. Really fascinating. And, and then I guess, I guess the structure of what the actual minerals are that are precipitating out. So when the hot water hits the cold water, the minerals, that's what we're seeing in the, the what we're calling smoky water, um, but it's its creating that solid structure. So the composition of that um, and how fast it precipitates and what structures it makes is also that contributes to the how solid it is and the structure itself Yeah, and its strength. I really love the idea that, you know, we, when you think about science and you think about, you know, I'm going to study marine biology, right? But really, it's all connected to, you know, you've got chemistry in there, we've got physics in here, we've got, you know, an understanding of um, how we measure all these things. We need engineering in there. So it, it's really neat how all of the sciences integrate. Um, also, you know, Renny, your background is in mapping, right? And, and navigation, and, and we need that too. So uh, really, really love that multidisciplinary. Yeah. Yeah, it all comes together. Coming together. It's a way of different people with different expertise and perspectives, and they can often kind of in inform the others and give a new, pers new solution. Yeah. And I just want to also give a shout out to Ed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah Ed. Because uh, you're waking me up for this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Definitely. You know, it, it's integral to have your expertise with the cameras and uh, doing all that you do, streaming it so that we can see and explore together. And yeah, I'm just Ed, a didn't you part also of a team of three. Ed, yeah. didn't you build this wonderful control room as well? Uh, my firm did that with a much larger team. Yeah, we built this control van and the video system. Well, it's absolutely distribution lovely. Distribution around the vessel. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This is a lot nicer than some of the other uh, more cramped control vans I've been in. It's <laughs> quite Josh. pliable too, so we can use this to launch uh, unmanned vessels and vehicles, monitor them, control them from here. Oh, this is an interesting question that uh, just came in, asking about carbon in the ocean. So do hydrothermal vents uh, reduce the level of carbon in the ocean or pump it, pump out more? And I guess, you know, we need um. gas tight. That's part of the reason why we get the, the gas tights to figure out the mineral yeah. composition of... I guess it is, yeah. I don't actually know about the hydrothermal vents. I know when we were bubble catching, right? Remember when we were bubble catching a few days ago? The there were these cold seeps of methane. Yeah. I think those... Uh, well, I guess that's methane. That's different that than carbon. But it is a greenhouse gas, and it's a very potent greenhouse gas. And so I know that methane seeps in the ocean are studied um, particularly for that reason. Or I guess like they carry a lot of significance for that reason. That uh, the methane that comes out of the ocean is is fairly significant in terms of the greenhouse effect. Right. But hydrothermal vents, I don't know. Do well, know? and methane Sean, methane any? is a uh, organic compound, right? So mm -hmm. it has carbon in yeah. the chemical structure. So yeah. yeah. Uh, I have a feeling that a lot of the stuff coming out of these hydrothermal vents aren't organic in nature. So um, I'm not an expert on this at all, but I'd, I'd wager that, you know, you know, have a lot of heavy metals and, you know, things coming from deeper in the earth. Um, 
so yeah, I, I don't think it's spewing out oil, if that's what you're asking. No, no, it definitely smells like sulfur, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, and that's interesting, that's actually in the species name of the palm worms. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. So I'd have to look at it back up to pronounce it in, right. But. Insofar as, you know, they have these like organic communities growing so far down in the ocean, um, and these organic organisms are made out of carbon, they're fixing carbon out of the ocean. So I guess in a runaround way, it does contribute to getting rid of, uh, or like a carbon fixation into the earth. Yeah, but that's like super long uh, time periods. Yeah. But the, uh, the methane that you were mentioning, that's kind of, you know, understanding how much of that is a part of the global greenhouse gas budget so methane seeps not not knowing their of their existence or how many of them there are or whether or not that methane actually reaches the atmosphere or kind of how it's contained within the ocean that's kind of part of the reasons we're all studying it also that 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 uh, gas comes out of the methane hydrate the ice form so in order for that methane hydrate to uh, to kind of release that gas there's depth it's depth and temperature dependent. So understanding, okay, with X amount of degrees of ocean warming at this depth, are we going to be releasing more methane? Um, with sea, if there's sea level rise or lowering, how will that affect the level at which these the methane hydrate can release the gas? And so understanding that as far as, as, far as part of the model is important, similar to um, which I think people may be more familiar with is understanding, you know, if the levels at which permafrost, which is permanently frozen ground, if that, if there's, if that, um, you know, those areas or latitudes are changing and you're releasing more of what's contained because those are no longer permanently frozen, how is that contributing? So then you get into these feedback loops, et cetera, but understanding at least kind of how much there is, is and where it is and how it's changing is, is all part of that. And this is why we call him Encyclopedia Rennie. <laughs> Just been on enough cruises where there's scientists explaining it behind me. Well, that's fabulous. Yeah, really neat. I found some information about the vents. It seems like it's metals mostly that are coming out of the vents and they combine with sulfur to form black minerals called sulfides. And that's what gives the hydrothermal fluid the appearance of smoke. Right. Many factors trigger this reaction. One factor is cold temperature. Another is the presence of oxygen in the seawater. So without the oxygen, the minerals would never form. Hmm. Thank you, Woods Hole, for the uh, interactive education exhibit. Very cool. And on this expedition uh, with Ocean Eric's Canada, we are going to be doing a couple of days of mapping. Um, so this will be multi-beam mapping. A couple of days? Yep. I, I yep. believe so, oh. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So yes, we will. So we won't be diving for a while, I think, is, is the plan. Um, but we, you know, everything's really dynamic when we're out here on the water. Have to be flexible and take the opportunity. I think this dive even was called in the middle of the night. Like, things are good, let's go. So, yeah. Yes, the mapping that we'll be doing is in support of uh, the expansion of the potential expansion of the marine protected area, as I understand it, and in support of some pending ROV dives that will um, be in those uh, on those regions. And there, there are seamounts within that are not that are actually close by um, where we are now. Yeah. So we are currently in Canada's first marine protected area, the Endeavour Hydrothermal Vents. And this I was first established in 2003. And 
we refer to the area of interest as the THT, but um, it actually honors the indigenous communities, coastal communities, whose traditional territory of the, the ocean that this area uh, falls within. So it's the Tungguan Hachkwikwa Tsigis. That is the name of this area of interest. And Tungguan is a Haida word meaning deep ocean. Hachkwikwi is a Nachanath and Pachidat word meaning the deepest part of the ocean. And the last part, the Tsigis, is a Quatsino word referring to monster of the ocean. And this expansion will make um, 2.31 percent of Canada's ocean territory and we are on a mission to do I think it's 30 30, 30 by 30 by 30 yeah so 30 percent of the oceans around Canada protected um, by 2030 so this would do a lot to help contribute towards that I think it'd be the 14th or 15th marine protected area um, and its approximate size will be 133,000 square kilometers. How many nautical miles squared is that? I would put that into Google. <laughs> Thanks for finding my weak point, AJ. You don't know the conversion? No, I don't. <laughs> I definitely do not. Would you like me to do the conversion? No, that's no. okay. I'm just going to assume most of our listeners are using the superior metric system. <laughs> Whoa. Them is fighting words, AJ. <laughs> yeah, or I know, especially on an American ship. Yeah, or they're from a country that's been to the moon. <laughs> hey. Oh. <laughs> we put arms in space, man. Didn't they do all their measurements in uh, metric uh, for the moon mission? Well, we mixed it when we did the Mars mission. <laughs> yeah, that was that <laughs> part of Robin Williams' show. <laughs> And, uh, I don't know, Mike. That was all fake, just like this. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, like this. There is no water. <laughs> Do you just turn on the mic just to say something like that and then turn it off? <laughs> 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 he just came in the van to say that and then leave. Where'd he go? <laughs> Not a lot of choices here. <laughs> We've got some jokes coming in. Oh, let's hear them. Well, they're not jokes. They're trivia, actually. I shouldn't have said jokes. Trivia. Hmm. So, like, the kind of things you find in fortune cookies or well, yeah. Christmas crackers? Yeah. So, this is actually one of Trevor's friends writing in. Hmm. And, uh... Yeah, where's my 20? <laughs> okay, so here we go. What is the shell of a sea urchin called? Don't test me. Ooh. You got it. It's called a test. And uh, what is the Portuguese man of war? Hmm. Like what's it classified as? Yeah. What kind of organism? Is it a colonial organism? So I guess it is not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's not a colonial possible. organism. What is it? Is it a tinafore? Um, no. It's well, like... Um, Salp, isn't it? Or nope. Oh, what is it? Come on, guys. It is a type of jellyfish. Oh. The Tina Four was the closest answer. Yeah. Uh, marine, marine I thought this was a trick question. Jelly. I know. No. Like, that's the most obvious. I yeah, I should have. Uh, didn't it, someone say? It, like, it actually is a community jellyfish. of organisms. What? Yeah, that's yeah. what's so interesting about it. Yes. AJ oh, with the nice Google one. win. Yeah. That could have supports been what my supporting me. once, and I double checked <laughs> it. What is your, your wife studied? Yeah, she's marine a bi marine biologist. Very cool. But she studies kelp. She also very she cool. She doesn't study these things. Do they even come up this far? They're usually uh, found in Australia or something, aren't they? I don't they? know, but aren't they like really dangerous? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure like everyone in Australia has been stung by one. Every single Australian. Yeah, yeah. That's how you get your passport. You have to get stung. 
you get to choose either yeah. a scorpion spider yeah. or man of war. Well, you know, there's yeah, so many there. dangerous animals there. there. Well, there's a man of war warning sign in Hawaii. Mm. So I guess they come up Go ahead, that bridge. far. Sure. Yeah, go for it. Yep. Wow, so, that was easy. So, folks, we, we also had, uh, we didn't dive for a part of yesterday, and uh, Herc was getting some things fixed up. So we got Dave and Josh here, our pilots, to tell us a little bit about what we found and how you resolved it. Want to fight me for it, Dave? What do you want to do? How we resolved it? Trial and error, I guess. Basically, yeah. um, go for it, Dave. Well, um, basically, we had issues where when we were thrusting or using multiple functions at the same time, we would lose pressure, um, which initially pointed us towards a pump uh, that was wearing out. That's the usual symptoms. So, changed the pump. That didn't... Well, it, it went okay to begin with, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it sort of helped. And then, it sort of started to fade off, drop away again, started losing a lot of pressure. Um, ROV became almost uncontrollable, really. So, we recovered. Changed another pump. Uh, that didn't quite work out, and long story short, um, did a bit of deeper investigation into things, and, and then we ended up going into the, I think the other shift went into the manifold, which is where a lot of the flow control is con uh, managed for the thrusters and other bits and pieces, and one of the bypass valves in there, the spring was slightly worn out, and it was allowing hydraulic fluid to bypass it when it should have been closed. Basically, when we bring the system out of idle and put it onto a high pressure flow, that valve should close and not allow anything past, and it wasn't closing correctly. It was basically like if you had your garden hose at home and you went to spray your plants and uh, just a little bit was dribbling out the end because there was a leak at the end coming, you know, the, the bit coming right out of your house that plugs into the garden hose, there's a big leak there just just leaking right out. And it wasn't leaking out of the vehicle per se, but that's... that's um, yeah, it's something you couldn't physically see. There's no... You, you couldn't physically detect it on a gauge anywhere. It's just something that we had to work our way back towards and rule other things out before we got there. A lot of... A lot of... All of our OV troubleshooting is... Um, you know, narrowing down the problem. Sometimes you just know what it is and sometimes you don't, and it takes a long time to narrow down. The systems are complex, so it, it did take us a while, but we got there in the end. Nice work. Yeah, it's pretty neat. You've got an impressive shop, um, you know, with tools and all the equipment you need to be able to maintain Herc and, and uh, do you do work on Atalanta as well, or does it? Yep. Is Yes, we're, we're, our, our job is, to, is also to maintain Atlanta. Uh, Atlanta uh, requires generally less maintenance. It has a lot, lot less moving parts. It yeah. only has two thrusters that are electric, so it has no hydraulic pump or pressure or anything like that uh, to run thrusters or manipulators. So uh, yeah, generally much less maintenance on Atlanta. You're talking about at Atlanta, right? At Atlanta. At I don't know. I don't. Know. I'm in, yeah. in Atlanta. 
Have Atlanta. Atlanta, Georgia? No. When I get confused, I just call it the sled. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> the sled. I'm going to start calling it Argus again if you keep correcting me. Yeah, we do that a lot. <laughs> it's hard to transition between them. So Her Hercules and Atalanta are named after um, Greek gods, right? So I looked it up the other day, but too. Hercules was a demigod, wasn't he? Hercules was a demigod. Demigod, Argus okay. was a demigod? Argus was also Greek. I'm not looking at you because I want the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like Argus was a many-eyed giant in Greek mythology. There you go. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Wikipedia can tell us about Atalanta. Oh, right. This is right. Uh, Atalanta means equal in weight. Hmm. I'm not sure why that was picked for the name mm. of the sled, as Dave mm. likes to say. I think it has something to do with the Greek mythology of Atalanta. Just have it up over here. We got, we got lots of ROVs around the world that are named after Greek gods, but not all of them, right? Yes, there are quite a few. There's a lot. Yeah. You're really, really quiet on my headset, Ed. Be, yeah. Be grateful. <laughs> I, I am, but yeah. it's just in case. Check, 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 check. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Just taking a look at the dive plan. We were pretty deep today, hey? So. Oh, 2100? 2100 meters, yeah. Yeah. So it takes us a while to come back up. Yeah, but from there, about two hours. Maybe a little less. What's it? What have we got? Another hour and a half? No. Hour and twenty minutes to go to. We're up. Mm. An hour and ten. Ooh, it does the math for you. Never even noticed. Mm -hmm. So that's what. 2,100, 6,600, 6,800 feet. Sure. Give or take. <laughs> yeah. It's also like 4,000 seconds. No, 2,100 meters, you muppet. <laughs> I'm wondering what's for lunch. I don't know. For some of us, it's dinner. For some of us, it's dinner. That's right. For some of us, it's breakfast. <laughs> this is true. I'm not waiting around for second dinner today, though. I'm going to bed. Oh, really? Yeah. You're wiped, too. So am I, but I had a nap. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, actually, speaking of that, <clears throat> You did have a nap. I uh, fully fell asleep. Yeah, we fully have photographic evidence. Oh, I know. It just got sent to me. <laughs> Nobody got me mouth open, though? No. I was... Uh, catching flies? <laughs> I, wa I was. Uh. It's this, uh, the motion up here. Rocking yeah. you to sleep. Yeah. Don't worry, I'll, I'll handle that with the mapping shortly enough. Yeah. Well, thanks, Rennie. <laughs> yeah, I like when you go uh, parallel to the yeah, wave crest. Can you map? That's my yeah. favorite. We might have a little bit of that. In the, in the trough, as they say. That's right, yeah. Some of the some of the boxes of what we have to map are make sense in that right direction. In the, right in the rolly bit. Yeah, I'll try to quarter it as much as I can, but we'll see. Well, uh, and you know, if there's a limitation, we'll, we might have to change 
approach. There's no way that the rolling of the ship is good for the multi-beam either. Actually, the rolling is okay. It's really? the pitching? Yes, it's the pitching that's bad because the pitching um, causes bubbles to come under the hull, and that uh, messes with the multi-beam. But the rolling doesn't do that, and the MRU is enough to compensate as long as everything's calibrated well. Um, I guess you just get, like, wider swaths thanks to the roll. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes, and it's got yeah. a bit of smarts in it to be this able to rolling, kind yeah. of um, to be able to constrain that a bit, um, because it's it's meant to be, you know, the MRU is kind of like sending the way that the uh, uh, your your beam steering is kind of um, can be compensated a bit. Don't they have these cool ships that have these uh, ballast tanks? That they're able to like run back and forth to one another to counteract the roll. Yeah, like the actively. um the Igor twenty threes have that. Uh, they have a anti roll tank which is up on the O two level forward, and it's filled with water with a series of baffles between it to slow the motion of the water down. So when you're leaning all the way to one side, the water's you know Still just getting the there side, as the yeah. boat goes to the other side acts as a counterweight. Hmm. Um, but that's a hundred meter by twenty meter vessel. So. Well, dream big, right? Yeah. Stabilizers, I fair yes. enough, but having water up high like that, I don't, I don't, no, nah, I can't trust that. <laughs> um, the only bad thing about the stabilizers is you have to be underway for that to. So well, you used to have to be, not anymore. Zero uh, speed stabilizers, mate. Uh, yep. I haven't seen How do stabilizers mm -hmm. work? They basically counteract the roll of the vessel. They're like thrusters that are acting. No, about the about big roll. fins that stick out from underneath the side, under the, under the hull, basically oh, okay. adds water weight, extra water weight, basically mm -hmm. below. Right. The force presses against yeah, it. Yeah. The right, zero right, speed right. stabilizers, if I remember correctly, we had them installed on Octopus during a refit uh -huh. a long time ago now, and they are electrically driven, I believe. Mm to help just it only needs small amounts because you're just sat at anchor somewhere but it takes that oh. roll out when you're sat at anchor so the guests on the yacht can stay then there's nice the, and comfortable yeah the opposite the co there's a couple of ships where we were docked that are meant to t to roll over 360 yeah yeah what do they call those they're awesome i want to i want to do one of those we were on the flip ship Oh, yeah. We oh, toured the flip, we toured the flip cool. ship in uh, San Diego. At Scripps. At Scripps, yeah. That's cool. I was like working like on a... Horizontal line goes vertical. It's crazy. They tow it out horizontal, and then when they want to do something oceanographic with it out where it's supposed to be, they it goes vertical, so everything... It's got stuff on it that's either on the floor or on the wall. So it's like a sink on the tip, wall. When they tip it, you just kind of... <laughs> you just roll under. with it. Come they they put the you wall. in like a rotating cage. Then they rotate a, it, and then you get on. Have you just had a go on the the high release life rafts? No, no, no thanks. I've <laughs> no thanks. Is it, it looks like a neck breaker. It's it's unreal. You're when you're sat in the seat, it's yeah. like kind of like a bucket seat, the five point harness, and a strap on your head. That makes sense. The strap. <laughs> <laughs> when it the impact when you hit the water is horrendous, but yeah. it goes under and then it comes. Oh, shoots back out. Yeah. I love watching those like shoot Oof. and like it misses kind of like the trajectory, so they end up like just tumbling. I feel uh, like I've seen that on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I've, I've seen a video of one that does a complete 360. Yeah. So it just hits the water and then does a flip. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. I've yeah. been on the uh, Jurassic World ride at Universal. That was the same, pretty much. Pretty okay. much. Pretty much the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much the same. <laughs> pretty much the same. I get it. Yeah, I've, I don't know. I've seen those. Uh, yeah, seeing the angle that they're at and imagining the neck impact is very. Yeah, it's pretty scary. Pretty scary. Hurt but if you're on a tanker, that could get you out from under the flames. And yeah, scooting that's away. why they have them. Yeah. And yeah. On, on the rigs, it throws you out through the flames and out the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Folks out there are asking about um, how to get involved with stuff operations with the Nautilus, and there are a number of ways. Um, the position that I'm 
filling right now, uh, I work with OceanRx Canada, but typically this role is com uh, fulfilled by a science communications fellow. There's an application process that you can check out on nautiluslive.org. But there are a number of other ways too that you could be involved. Um, doing what you're doing right now, checking it out, the live stream and, and writing in. There's also a patch design contest for each um, year of expedition. This year is pretty cool. It's got an octopus on it. And or you can call Trevor Shepard directly at two five six. We also have a very active internship program too in four different departments. And those applications open up at, towards the end of the year. Right on. What are, are the four different departments, Ed? Yeah, go ahead, Renny. Uh, well, there's uh, <laughs> there's video. Yeah. Uh, we got ocean science. Um, <laughs> I want to see you forget your There's department. mapping. <laughs> and ROV. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Awesome. That's because you're already in position one. Yeah. Yay! Yeah, we keep. We want to switch to the gauges when we come shallower. Some other interesting facts about this current expedition, NA-151. This is for maintenance of the Ocean Networks Canada infrastructure, as well as exploration. We'll be doing, we've been doing some sampling and things. Um, we are, this is a, we're a week into our 20 day, 22 day expedition. I think it's... I thought it was 24. 24? It's a long time, three weeks. <laughs> Unless you know something I don't. <laughs> yeah, they're dropping me off earlier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. um, yeah. You can check out nautiluslive.org, of course. If, if you're hearing this, you probably are there. And then also oceannetworks.ca. Just as a fun fact, we've got people from uh, the US, Italy, Canada, UK, Germany, Sweden, Norway, Netherlands, Finland, Sp Spain, and Denmark. Thank you for joining us from all over the world. Hey, Sean. <laughs> no, Brendan, rest easy. We will bring your lander back. We just don't have time before the weather sets in, but we are not done at MEF. Our tool basket is still there with our gas tights and our sediment trap and all sorts of other things to do. So it is uh, for sure on our high priority dives is to get back to MEF and we will release your tool basket or release the lander then. I think the one of the reasons we didn't want to release it now is because there's weather moving in and the ship's ability to station keep is not great and we don't want to smash it against the hull. So um, that's why we'll we'll wait for better weather to do that stuff. And AJ, speaking of that, that's actually something we could quickly chat about. Is the, it? 
It is. Oh. <laughs> so with the, the ROVs, we saw in the dive today, they've got the porch and they've got the little basket. There's all sorts of tools and things we can put in there, but um, we are pretty equipment intense. So we designed, someone designed and built a, a, bas a toolbox. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So the toolbox was sent down on uh, our winch on yeah, the other side. That's right. ONC's very own winch. ONC's very own winch. Yeah. And get set down just like a toolbox? Yeah, we let it go with an acoustic release. Okay. So sometimes we'll use what we call a pink hook, which is like an ROV um, usable hook, triggerable hook. So the uh, it has sort of, um, it requires pressure on both sides, quite a lot of pressure. So uh, it's very difficult to do by hand on the deck, but for an ROV, it's quite easy for it to go and squeeze the hook to release it. And that allows us to unhook and rehook objects. So we'll use that sometimes like we did earlier in this cruise at Clackwatt, uh deformation front. And, but that's not what we did this time with the tool basket because having the extra wire in the water is uh, not something we want to do for very long. And we knew it would take us a long time to deal with all the instruments coming down on this tool basket. So instead we put an acoustic release on it, which allows us to send uh, an acoustic signal from the ship to trigger the release. It's like a mechanical mechanism that opens up and the tool basket drops down onto the ocean floor and then we can retrieve the wire and leave the tool basket down there. Um, yep, the tool basket was was um, designed and built by Ocean Networks Canada. There are other tool baskets out there that other ROVs use. And so, you know, a lot of this uh, technology comes from, you know, collaboration and, and working with different ROVs, um, doing these tasks in different ways, and we're constantly trying to improve on our tools. Um, so, yeah sounded like the pilots had some words for our tools earlier. Oh, <laughs> words no. Words of frustration. <laughs> yeah, we're always making life harder for them, too. There yeah. have been some really... That's um, not true. You guys make life easier for us most of the time. Yeah, I done? think you, in a lot the, of ways. Like the I think AJCTD deployment thing. What, do you, what are we calling that? Oh, the flagpole. The flagpole. Yeah. That's a win. We got the big Fletcher as a win five years ago. I'm really, I'm really proud of how that flagpole you went, should actually. Be. You should well, thank you, Josh. That's yeah. He's only saying that because so we're nice. all on comms. Yeah, <laughs> I was on vacation in Hawaii when you deployed that, and I was watching from Hawaii, and uh, I heard that I scored a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. And I went and I told everyone. <laughs> nine out of ten. You I told said, everyone in Hawaii. I told everyone in Hawaii. Yeah, ask anyone in Hawaii. They'll be like, "Oh yeah, that guy. That was weird." Yeah, <laughs> that, was, that was odd. <laughs> Celebrating some far off win. <laughs> But we only got to deploy one that cruise, so we have another one in the yard still waiting to go down. Well, I find as ROV pilots, if we complain enough, you guys do something about stuff. Yeah, I mean, the Fletcher, like, the way that we deal with connectors now, oh, I think man. is a real step up. I think the flagpole is going to be a big step up, too. I well, think the next step is to... Um, put the Fletcher on the flagpole? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the, only, it's the only way. It's the only, the only logical next step. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, uh, I wonder if there's a, a bit easier way to do the bars and the temp probes. I yeah, guess we've been doing the gas them tights. pretty successfully. The gas tights. Well, yes. so the gas tights are funny, right? Because, so I've been dealing, well, we all have been dealing with these University of Washington um, mechanical gas tights for a long time. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of complaints about how it's difficult to do the plunger with, with two arms. But... As long as I've been at ONC watching dives, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure we've hit. That's true. Uh, maybe all but one. I mean. Didn't we, this might, I might be thinking somewhere else, have a thumb attachment to trigger those? Yeah, we did. Yeah, uh, yeah we had a, there is a, but then you have to run a cable up the arm and that runs a whole bunch of problems. Right. 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 You also have to line up the thumb with how yeah, you're holding it. Yeah. yeah. I've right. always heard that that is also quite restrictive to the rest of the dive, and we're yes. always doing gas tights at MEF, where we have a million other things to be doing. Which is right. where we're always doing gas tights. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, it's an elegant solution, the thumb thing. It's just a, a, a bit of a, a bummer that it doesn't Are work. they out of uh, EPL made those? 
the applied physics lab at UW. I don't know what don't what know. branch she uses. Mm -hmm. it. I the what the gas them. tights? Yeah. Well, I know it's it, they, they're processed by Dr. Marv Lilly, so I can look up what uh, department he's in. Uh, College of the Environment. Yeah. Overall, uh, over the years, the ROV providers and the and Ocean Networks Canada have worked a lot closer together uh, to make things easier in, in general. Okay, maybe I, I get emails in the winter all the time. Maybe this is silly, but what about an acoustic release on a gas tight? Like a really mini acoustic release? That's not silly. That's there's, there's, a, there's a way that that could work. That could That's work. That's a pretty good idea. Interesting. You heard it here, folks. Lauren had the idea. Yeah. Got a lot of interference from the vehicle. Yeah, it's, the vehicle is quite loud, and you wouldn't want to do it from the surface necessarily, but you could, but you could potentially have a, a system on the vehicle as long as the frequencies. The the worry would be that there'd be some. It or would have to be. Noise. You'd have to have a backup. Yeah, and there would. You'd have to have a unique trigger, just like the Bluetooth. acoustic releases. It wouldn't be just a frequency. It would be a code that's kind of sent. There's other. But yeah, that's that's not. That's Bluetooth. not a bad thought. Bluetooth works through the water. Yeah. yeah. Bluetooth. It does. Part it works through the water that close. It's been proven. Pru proven. Yeah. <coughs> like yeah, we've had success. Meters, it'll work. Mm -hmm. We've had success Bluetooth. with Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Underwater Wi-Fi. Just just much smaller distances than yeah. In air. I had a friend who was scuba diving coming up in a dry suit between 30 and 40 feet and could feel his cell phone vibrating in his pocket. No way. Yeah. I don't believe that at all. Yeah. Wow. That's cell. That's what cell data. Like, do you yeah. want to go or? No idea. Oh, I don't care, Dave. Go ahead. I should find out the exact depth. Hmm. That you get cell signal. Yeah, that he uh, had his phone ring. AJ's in disbelief. I am. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this he, is one of your far-fetched. Uh, no, no, I, w I would <laughs> ask him, but he's in the. He's actually in the Galapagos right now on a trip of a lifetime. Oh wow, that sounds. Must be nice to have a cell phone underwater and be in the Galapagos. No, no, he, uh, the cell phone underwater thing was in Seattle years ago. <laughs> Sometimes it's just nice to unplug, isn't it? Yeah, and like we, you don't take your phone there to use it during a dive. It's used to unlock your vehicle or something, so you just stow it in your inside your dry suit. A lot of faith in his dry suit seals. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Trevor uh, Blood never had a dry suit seal failure. No? You ever had a wetsuit failure? Seal failure? No, Not the whole seal point. failure. Oh, no. You meant like a jellyfish getting your wetsuit or something? No, I get jellyfish stings on my upper lip when they go by. We have my, uh, lion's mane jellyfish with really long tentacles. So that's really about the only exposed part in cold water diving. Isn't there some diving where they pump hot water down your down your back or something? Yeah, not, deep sea diving. Maybe deep, deep sea, sea diving. diving. Yeah. I know that story is some guy what? accidentally got a jellyfish got through. Oh really? Oh, <sighs> yeah. The uh, the thing a lot of well, no, some dry suit divers do instead of filling your dry suit with your uh, back gas, your breathing gas, is they'll have a very small. It's like seven. I mean, it's very small bottle of argon argon yeah which is the very heavy gas that's used in your insulated windows it's between the two panes and it's a it's a much better insulator temperature than air yeah. is so they'll fill their they'll have a separate bottle you have to drag around but hmm. then you're filling your dry suit with argon gas and you're not burning up uh, breathable gas just to manage your buoyancy Do you dive, Ed? Uh, I'm so tempted to say no just for the humor of it, but yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Where was the coolest place you dove? Uh, favorite dive of all time is a dive run by some friends of ours in uh, the big island of Hawaii called Pelagic Magic, where you go a couple miles offshore at night off the shelf kill the engine, throw a parachute in the water, hook it up to the bow so you're drifting with the current, 
put some weighted lines in. Each diver is clipped to one line. You go down, lines are about 40 feet deep. And you uh, are down there with all the pelagic, you're staring into two miles of black and looking at all the pelagic life coming up to feed. It's like a... All the bioluminescent. Uh, and it, it, the, uh, you start to realize there's almost more life than water. There's so much stuff in the water column, uh, which is just poorly understood. And it's, just, and it's very hard to tell. Is this a, you know, a giant thing far away or a small thing close to me, you know, trying to gauge distance and all that? And it's just crazy looking organisms coming up. Um, uh, that's fun. You know, the other nice thing, too, uh, being a contractor is any dive that you enjoy on, like, a Tuesday afternoon when, you know, everybody else is in an office is always fun. <laughs> what about you, Josh? Where's the coolest place you wakeboarded? Oh, man. There is this sweet lake filled with cabins and people that don't want to be disturbed, and I just rip around <laughs> with my... Uh, wakeboard boat and seven jet skis and all my bros and we just destroy the docks oh. and people yell at us we play our music so loud that we're all deaf by the end of the day it's the best you ever wakeboarded on the Pacific Lake or the Atlantic Lake the big lakes <laughs> bigger than the Great Lakes usually <laughs> you can't even talk now <laughs> They're pretty sick. You, you know what, though? He's laughing at what he just said, not what any of us said. <laughs> okay. <sighs> you know, I just read that one of the Great Lakes is not even a lake at all. It's actually an inland sea. Inland What's what? the difference? Is inland it salt what? water? An inland sea. Sea. Yeah. Okay. Sea. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. They're not that great. On a scale of greatness one from one to Jake, they're oh. not Jake. Wow. Well. One to wakeboard. <laughs> do you have a separate engine on your boat, or are you just powered by the subwoofer? <laughs> it helps with fishing too, because they just die from the sound waves. Well, <laughs> it it's <laughs> no, I have to have <laughs> I have six engines actually. Uh, it it's. It, the fuel is a thousand gallons an hour. It oh, yeah. just rips through fuel. Do you, but it's a, okay because do you have a gas powered fuel pump? <laughs> He's a jet ski motor for a fuel pump. <laughs> jet drive? Yeah. <laughs> jet drive fuel, fuel powered pump. fuel pump. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a leaf blower for a carburetor. It's hooked up there yeah, for cold air intake. Yeah. It's all two stroke, too. Everything's yeah. two stroke. <laughs> yeah. You really should put some exhaust on that or something. So. Just dump an oil into the fuel tank. Yeah. Thirty to one, forty Ooh, to one, no, uh, five to one. Couple well, you of know, big swells there. Yeah, there's some big ones. Pretty neat. Pretty. Pretty, pretty swell. neato. Pretty. We should probably get out of the water. Probably get out of oh. the water. <laughs> Work on it. Okay. Let's okay. recover. Yeah. Yeah. When we fall back because of those swells, and then uh, we're like maxed out to kind of get back on our position. I've been watching it. We use some of those wake boat engines on uh, the Nautilus. Yeah, but he couldn't.